called the January 17th Wayne County Commissioner Board meeting to order. All right. The invocation today will be Chairman Barbara Acock, Pledge of Allegiance, Chairman Barbara Acock. And approval minutes for January the 3rd. Mr. Carpenter, do we have any discussion on the agenda? Uh, we do have some adjustments. Under unfinished business, please remove that item. Item one, remove. Okay. Under new business, uh, we'd like to, uh, under consent agenda, under the budget amendments, we have one budget amendment that's a walk on. And then, which she'll explain in a few minutes. And then we, under new business, we have a memorandum from RSM Harrison Associates for a demolition contracts, three demolition contracts for houses that were in, bought out in our hazard mitigation grant program. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to put that under new business as item number three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and that's that's all the adjustments. Okay. <sighs> And we will have the appointment committee. Uh, special presentations. We have special presentations next. One, number one will be the presentation of employee service pins. And then number two will be a presentation on CDBG grant approval by Larry Jones. Uh, that's a gentleman that came a couple meetings ago, tried to talk. Uh, in a public meeting section, but we didn't have one, so we'll, we were allowing him some time. Number three is a presentation on the bi-weekly payroll transition by Finance Director Allison Spate. Then we go to appointment committee. Yeah, thank you. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. Oh, no, that's go gone. Then we're moving on to consent. We have application for special present use value. That's been cleared by the tax office. And then we move on to budget amendments, uh, Allison. First budget amendment. I'll let you, let you get there. <laughs> Trying to go through it a little bit fast because we want to have a closed session prior to our 9 o'clock, resuming our 9 o'clock. So we would have closed session. That's right. We have several items for closed session, but I want to get economic development and uh, EDR here first. Evidently, is seeing a problem with the speed of this Wi-Fi. Yes. Because it, with all of us on here, evidently it's slowing it down. So we might need to talk to IT about that. Do you do you want me to go ahead and start on the budget amendments, or would you rather wait? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes, okay. Please do. Okay. Um, the first budget amendment is going to be for the sheriff's office. They are re, um, allocating $5,895. They're moving it from office supplies non-capital to capital outlay equipment for seized property. Um, this is just to allow them to purchase um, some um, seized property eligible equipment for negotiating situations. Okay, your next budget amendment is for register of deeds. We are anticipating $2,166 of grant revenues and appropriating those expenditures. Um, and those will be used in um, throughout her, um, her expenditure line items. We have a budget amendment for the Sheriff's Office. Um, this is totaling $56,000 and it's moving the money from salaries and wages <coughs> to overtime and the retirement line item. This is to cover um, 
vacant positions they've had to use overtime on their officers that they have to cover vacant positions. We have a budget amendment for the detention center and it's kind of the same story. Um, it's $185,120. They are moving that money from salaries and wages. Most of it is going to overtime. The remaining is going to part-time and fringes. And this is to cover vacant positions by the um, existing officers with overtime and part-time help. We have a budget amendment for EMS and this is to reallocate $15,500, moving it from salaries and wages to hospitalization. Um, and this is just to cover, um, a, I think it was two positions that for some strange reason just did not import in for their hospitalization only. So we're covering that amount. For animal control, we are requesting to reallocate $7,550 from salaries and wages to overtime due to vacancies in that department. We have a budget amendment for Gateway. Um, it is to anticipate $56 in reimbursements um, to cover um, a little bit of salaries, wages, FICA, and retirement. We have a budget amendment for DSS totaling $5,904. These are additional funds received from the state to match the latest state funding authorization. And it's specifically for the crisis intervention program. You may have heard it as, as SIP. There's a budget amendment for FEMA, which is really specifically for our COVID-19 project. $42,136.43. Um, this is our remaining amount that we need to um, claim from FEMA of um, potentially eligible expenditures. Um, we have a budget amendment for the Rosewood State Grant Capital Project for Rosewood Middle School. Um, this is a, an amount of $46,000. We are, this is not new money, it's still the existing grant money. We're asking just to move it to the line item of professional services. Um, I think the last time we provided an update to you all, they were working out a contract with an architect, Davis Kane. They have secured that contract and they are now ready to begin the work and get that paid for. Um, this is sort of like a preliminary contract. There's gonna be a feasibility study involved um, and kind of, you know, to be able to understand what can they do within that budget and what kind of timeline it would take. <coughs> um, we have a budget amendment for cooperative extension totaling $25,000 and requesting to reallocate that from salaries and wages to part-time. Um, and this is specifically a grant coordinator position for 4-H prevention and it's now a part-time position instead of full-time. Then you all have a physical copy of the walk-on budget amendment for DSS. Um, it's for $72,000 and it's to um, their temporary help services has, um, they've exceeded the usage in that line item. So they are budgeting for $72,000 in additional state monies to cover part of that. <coughs> the remaining is coming from um, existing line item professional services. Does anybody have any questions on those I went over? Yes, a little explanation on the last one. Um, you said <coughs> 72000 Yes, coming. sir. How are you balancing that out? Mm -hmm. Is any of that coming from reserves or? No, sir. So, um, and I, I, I misspoke, I apologize. The actual total is 144000 Right. That right, was right. my fault. Mm -hmm. um, so 72,000 is coming from the state and then the remaining 72 is coming within an existing line item. So okay. thank you for catching me on that. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Alice. You're welcome. Uh, then we're moving on to uh, uh, local number three is a local government commission's response to the auditor's findings and recommendations and fiscal matters. Allison, yes, that, that, I'm sorry, I'm trying to multitask, not doing it well. Um, so you have um, 
Oh, there it is. Okay. You have a memo and then a letter. Um, this is, we've mentioned this a couple of times. So um, we did have one financial performance indicator of concern is what they call it by the LGC. Um, and it did relate to our sewer fund. Um, so we have to respond to that within a certain amount of time, but because we're going to the LGC um, on February 7th, um, they actually reached out to me um, in the last week and asked could we go ahead and get ours in. We had already planned to do that, so this worked out perfectly. Um, this is our response, and what it requires is that the majority of the board um, sign this letter. And so um, this is presented here for you. Um, just to give you a highlight of what it says is that we are working, um, we do acknowledge, you know, that minus um, depreciation, including debt service, um, there's operating loss, but it's, it's because of that debt service, which is specifically for the school, um, Grantham and I think it was Grantham Middle and Elementary, where we added on about, I think, nine, line, nine miles of sewer line. Um, and we, it, we knew in the beginning that that's what we had planned to do. So um, the LGC is aware of this. Um, they, this is just one of those things where you plug in numbers and things pop out, so we have to address it every year. Um, so I have um, here where we are working with the state on the NC Viabil Viable Utility Reserve Grant, and I also am talking about you know the debt service for the school and included our original letter to them back in 2020. Um, I've spoken with someone there at the LGC, and um, so I, you know we should be good as far as our response goes. But it does require that we present this to you all and have you sign it um, after the meeting is over. So, oh, where would that debt be paid off? Uh, whew, let me think. Seventeen thirty-seven, two thousand thirty-seven. So, other than the debt service, well, we're in the black. Right. That's correct. So the debt service has been the issue the whole time then? Um, last year, I think we did have a little bit of an issue with cash, but we corrected that this year. So, yes, pretty much it's been just debt service. Okay. Um, because you all have increased the, the user fees to address the operating issues. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, moving. Any more questions on that? Uh, number four, motion to appoint Commissioner Josie Daugherty to the <laughs> representative for the District 3 caucus. If you could elaborate on that, Carol, exactly. Um, so the NC We've already is, met. <laughs> pardon? We've already met. I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, it, it, it's just you, their approval, but um, you want to share what it was all about? Because basically there was a vacancy in regards to the representative of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners uh, Board. Um, and they just basically recommended, and we all agreed to reappoint a, or, or appoint a, um, a current commissioner in Craven County, since Craven was the next, was the one in rotation. So we all agreed to that. We met on Friday by Zoom and got that behind us. Thank you, sir. Okay. All righty. And then 10 a.m. We have an opioid oh. workshop with Nitty Such Diva with the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Have we got we got a budget amendment? Down to Harris. Would she already go over that? We want me. Did she ever go over that door that Harris Associate? No, she sure didn't. The Harris Associate. No, the uh it was actually social services. Uh, she did. Yes, I did. Yeah, she did. I went did. over to Harris. Okay. Mm -hmm. Harris is not now that's an Harris award in a contract. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I got you. All right. Under new business, uh, motion to approve the purchase of two hangars at the Wayne County Executive Jet Port with an appropriate budget amendment. Uh, number two is a motion to adopt resolution 2023 2 for the authorization of installment financing agreement between Wayne County and Truist. Then we'd have county manager's report, board of commissioners committee reports, and comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Number three is uh, under new businesses, RSM Harrison Associates. It's a memorandum uh, adding on three contracts for the demolition uh, of uh, houses that were purchased under our hazard mitigation grant program several years ago. I think this, uh, uh, we need to get these done so we can get these houses demolished. Um, 
and then we go to county managers report board of commissioners committee reports and comments closed session and then uh, we do have items for closed session and as soon as we could go to that i would appreciate it you want to any session? other questions on the Harris and harris contract i kind of rushed over that but mm -hmm. a straightforward demolition contract Madam Chair, I'll make a motion we go into closed session. If for the purpose of discussing the uh, businesses in Wayne County and to consult with your uh, attorneys to, for attorney client privilege. I have a motion on the floor to go in closed session. Will you please raise your right hand? Motion approved. We are now in closed session. Recess. We're back. We're going to recess. Mm -hmm. Oh, we are going to recess. And a motion to go. Yes. Recess. Yes. Oh, okay. Can we recess about five minutes?